Alex Ross, and I'm doing my first CGC signing this year. It'll be the exclusive way to get my signature, and submissions are limited, so please send in your books now. The two pieces are sort of of a type. They're both kind of recreations of artwork that existed in the 90s. In fact, this piece here for the Avengers is in most ways a recreation or a tribute to George Perez's poster version from the mid-90s where he did a shot that featured in it uh, a figure of Captain America that was very similar to what I've done here, uh, positioning of uh, the Vision or positioning of Hawkeye. And I believe a few other elements are very similar to that piece, and it's consciously so. I was building off that inspiration, but I kind of refitted my design to fill out bigger shots of the figures so that I was making a wider composition and getting in a lot of the same characters, but still not quite as many as what George himself did, because George's thing was always to try and get in the maximum amount of content into pieces that he did. Well, I wish this had been as simple as I just put a quick wash over every figure and it was all done, but each one took a lot of hand painting time to go in in particular and break down and I'm still piece by piece working my way figure to figure across the, the whole group of mostly jumping around as I did the piece, but since I've done so much of that now, I've completed three quarters of it and I'm only touching off the very last bits at the corner here now. Uh, which is a good way for me to feel like I'm accomplished in some regards, but I know I'm going to have to take a second look at the whole piece and go through and retouch a number of small objects and figure pieces that I need to refine. Uh, I don't want the edges of figures to be rough, and I know there's loads of rough edges around this that... Uh, don't happen to me quite the same way with a traditional cover composition, but there's nowhere to hide the figures here. They're all with strong, bright lighting on them, and nowhere where they're just sort of blending into the background color, because the background color is just other bodies that they're blending with, and each one of those bodies demands to be rendered with um, some great detailing and consideration, because they're all characters that need to be identified. They're not just a crowd. There's little bits where it's evocative of a certain pose, like say the classic Captain Marvel who's in here up at the top. Uh, he's maybe the second or third time I've done a tribute to a classic cover from the 70s that uh, was done by Jim Starlin with a complete pasted up head of John Romita on top of it, but it's a well-known pose from one of his covers that was repeated in usage a lot. It got picked up for all kinds of licensing image usage, and it's a striking pose of his body. And I composed him, or juxtaposed him, with other members of the sort of Marvel family from Marvel Comics, where he's near the character design of Marvel Boy that would then get up uh, amended to be a character called Quasar, and he's right near where Monica Rambeau Captain Marvel is, who would be the one who would take on the name after he died, and then also Ms. Marvel, who is now currently the modern-day inheritor of the name Captain Marvel, and if it sounds like too much to keep track of, it is too much to keep track of. Yeah, the X-Men piece is meant to be all the intense colors you can pretty much jam into something while still trying to figure out how the lighting would actually work with uh, context of, you know, there's lightning in the piece which causes a vast amount of bright light to be cast in one part of the piece. And then there's uh, Cyclops' red uh, blast, his optic blast going off. And then so that light has to affect things. So you've got all these sort of bounce light effects and... Um, you know, part of me feels like there's got to be an easier way for me to figure out how to do these pieces than so many damn light effects all the time. But the reason that uh, you have the construction of a design or the way that uh, mood in the pieces is indicated is by what is your light, what's creating it. You know, you don't just have a studio flat lighting like you did a, a professional photographer stu photographer studio. You have um, everything is dictated by the environment 
they're in, they're outside. So they're affected by everything from sunlight, atmospheric light, reflected light, all these things I'm trying to consider. And then there's just the mood I'm trying to get across, which can lead to completely imaginary kind of reflected light and other effects. And, uh, you know, so I'm trying to be conscious of all these things while hoping I can somehow along the way make a piece of artwork that doesn't necessarily exactly look like everything I've done before. As with all my pieces where I'm trying to put in the same amount of thought to each figure, I don't want to shortchange a single figure because I care about trying to establish uh, a tight rendering of each form. So even the tiniest figures in the background all have a specific photo I took for each of them, which is a combination of different elements. I will take a photo of myself doing the pose quickly in a quick sort of one bodysuit leotard so I have sort of the general human body form because all these guys are pretty much wearing just tight fitting clothes. Um, but then also uh, I combine that with reference of objects from action figures of many of the specific characters and I have a majority of these characters in a, a very well sculpted action figure from the Marvel Legends line. Um, and then there's other materials I have, everything from a life-size statue of Captain America that I created to work from, which is very much for the realism of getting him right, to a life-size Iron Man helmet that I made, a life-size Thor head, um, you know, multiple pieces, even a life-size bust of Adam West that I used as reference, which uh, I'll let people figure out where that was used.